section 10.2, um, finite arithmetic series. So back in 10.1, we learned an arithmetic sequence. So again, sequence is just terms, um, was given by the form a, um, a1 plus n minus 1d. Um, a series is now adding these terms up. So in series form, we're going to take those individual terms, a1 plus k minus 1 times d. I'm just going to use a different letter. Um, it's just an arbitrary letter. And then the sum is doing the first term through the nth term. And that'll be called s sub n, the sum of the first n terms. And so one option is we could just add them up, right? Whatever these terms are, add them up. Um, but if there's like hundreds of terms, it's going to take us a long time. So we have this cool shortcut formula. We can find the sum of the first n terms. That's what this means, sum of the first n terms, by just doing n times a1, the first term, plus a n, the last term, divided by 2. So let's see why this is useful. So if I want to find the sum of the first 100 positive integers, that means I'm doing 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 99 to 100. We could do that, right? But do you really want to type 100 numbers on your calculator and figure this out? Or even try to do it by hand? So instead, we'll use this cool shortcut formula. So um, my s sub n will be 100 for n times my first term, which is 1, plus my last term, which is 100, all over 2. And we call that s100 for the first 100 terms. So it's a nice shortcut, right? We don't have to find all the terms and add them up. So we get 100. We get 101 over 2. We can do this without a calculator. 102 give me 50 and 1. So we get 50 times 101, which would be 5,050. So if you added 1 through 100, you would get 5,050. But we just found a better way to do that. Um, I have another arithmetic sequence. Um, you'll notice it fits the pattern. We have a1 is negative 6 plus k minus 1 times a common difference of 3. So this is arithmetic as well. And we want to find the sum of the first 20 terms because we're doing k equals 1 through 20. So again, the shortcut formula will be nice here because otherwise I have to find 20 terms and add them up. So that means I have to plug in k, 1, k equals 1, k equals 2, k equals 3. So it would take a long time to find all 20 terms and add. Um, you're welcome to do that. But this new shortcut formula is going to make this go a lot faster. So we're going to find s20, because we're finding the 20 terms. And then we're going to do 20 first term plus 20th term over 2. So we already know the first term is negative 6. Um, we do have to plug in 20 to find the 20th term. But we don't have to find all 20 terms, right? We only need the 20th term. So this is faster. So a20 will be negative 6 plus 20 minus 1 times 3. Or negative 6 plus 19 times 3, which is, I don't know, 19 times 3 is 57 minus 6, 51. So my 20th term would be 51. And so we'll get 20. We'll get negative 6 is my first term. You could even plug in 1 if you weren't sure. So a1, negative 6, plus 1 minus 1 times 3. And you'll notice that cancels out, and we get negative 6. Plus 51 over 2. And that'll tell me the sum of the first 20 terms without finding all of the terms. So it's just saving us time. So we get 20 times 45 over 2. So 20 and 2 cancel and make 10. So the sum would be 450. Cool, let's try one more. Example five. So a couple decides to set aside $5 every month for the first year. 
of their marriage. And then in their second year, they're going to set aside 15 every month. In their third year, 25 every month. So, And then they're going to increase these amounts by $10 every year. So let's find the total set aside by the 15th year. So first, maybe let's figure out um, the pattern, and then maybe we can figure out the total. So let's see. The first year, let's do it by years, since we're doing years. So they're not setting aside $5 the first year. They're setting aside $5 times 12 months. So they're setting aside 60. So my A1 will be 60. A2 um, will be $15 times the 12 months. And that would be 180. A3 would be 25 times 12 months or 300. And I don't want to find all every single year. You're welcome to. But again, the shortcut formula will make this easier. So this is arithmetic because they're increasing by a dollar amount. Um, so they're technically increasing $10 for their monthly payment. So every year they would be increasing by 120. And that would be $10 times the 12 months. Right, so we'll see that common difference of 120. So let's find the equation for the AN term, and then we can figure out what happens after 15 years. So we might need to look up, but the nth term will be A1 times N minus 1. Sorry, AN will be A1 plus N minus 1 times that common difference. So in this case, we have 60 plus N minus 1 times the common difference of 120. So if we can figure out the amount the 15th year, then we can find the total by finding the sum. So in the 15th year, they're going to set aside 60 plus 15 minus 1 times 120. So go ahead and calculate that. I got 1740. And that doesn't represent total. That would just be how much they saved that individual year. So total means we want the sum after 15 years. So we could find, again, all 15 years and add them up, but I don't want to keep doing this, right? This is getting tedious. Finding just these was enough work. So we're going to use the formula. It's going to be 15 times A1 plus A15 over 2. And that'll give me the total over all 15 years. So we get 15 times 60 plus 1740 over 2. I think that becomes 1800 over 2. And then you can go ahead and calculate that. So 15 times 1800 over 2 gives me a total of 13,000. 500. So they seem like such small savings, right? But it added up pretty nicely. So they now have $13,500.